first we have dependent and independent variables. Um, so the independent variable is the variable that we assign value for. So normally that would be x, okay? And the dependent variable is the other variable because its value depends on the independent variable. Normally that is y, all right? So independent is our input and dependent is our output, whatever we get after we plug something in. So just write a couple notes on that. So we'll put that example down. Let's see, independent. That's important. Independent. Okay. Um, so a function is a relation between two sets that associates each element of the first set with one and only one element of the second set. Okay, so biggest thing is there's only one output for each one input, okay? So a set of ordered pairs in which no two pairs have the same first element and a different, okay, that's confusing, it's way, it's way easier to just try one, all right? So uh, easiest way to explain this is to explain which one is not a function um, actually, there are two that are not a function. Can anybody tell me from last year? You maybe remember what makes it not a function, Brennan? Yes. Why is B not a function? Go ahead. Exactly. The problem is when you plug one thing in, you can't get two things out. So it's because of the five giving you a three and the five also giving you a four, this makes it not a function. Okay. So this one's fine. You can plug three in and get three, and you can plug four in and get three. That is okay. That is a function, all right? And then this one's obviously fine. It's one to one. So yes, that's a function. And then they're gonna throw these weird ones in. And if you get ones where M doesn't go to anything, so it doesn't even connect to the other side, then it's not a function, all right? But the most common thing you're gonna see that you wanna recognize is you plug one thing in and you can't get two things out, okay? Think of it as a line. If you plug in a five, you're not gonna get two different answers, okay? Something like that, so not a function. So here's another way to look at it with coordinate points. So you might wanna write one down. So we plugged in four, we got three, we plugged in seven, we got five, we plugged in negative three, we got negative two, we plugged in negative six, and we got negative four. Um, really what you wanna look at is your x's. If you ever plug in the same x and you get a different y out, then it's not a function. So this one's fine, because we plugged all different x's in. So yes, this one is a function. I want to find one that is not because that makes all function. Okay, so let's look at this third one. So let's write down <coughs> this one, you guys, just so you have it in your notes. <coughs> what do you guys think? Is this a function or not a function? Okay, not a function. Why not? Good. Because you have two fives, and not just because you have two fives, but what do you get out each time? Different numbers. So if you had the exact same coordinate, it would be fine. But because you plug in 5 and you get negative 2, and then you plug in 5 and you get 4, it is not a function. So whenever you get not a function, I want you to say why. All right? And you can just say because 5 has two outputs. Or we should say different. Two different Sorry, <laughs> outputs, okay? So what about this one? We plugged in four, we plugged in five, we plugged in seven, we plugged in six. Is this one a function? Yes. Okay, how about this one? We plugged in seven, we plugged in three, we plugged in six, we plugged in four. Is this one a function? Yes. All right, all you look at is the x's and make sure that one x doesn't go to two y's. <coughs> All right, then we have function notation, which we also did last year. Um, so function notation, you just read it as f 
of x or g of x or h of x or whatever the variables are, those parentheses mean of, okay? So if h of x equals 7x minus 2 and p of x equals x squared minus 5x, find p of negative 5. Um, so they kind of trick you on this one. If you're looking for p of negative 5, you only plug it into one of those equations. Which one do you think we're going to plug it into? Yeah, the p equation. So this h of x is like unnecessary for this problem because it's h. So if it's p of x, plug it into the p equation, all right? So what I want to do is I want to find p of negative 5. <clears throat> okay, so all I'm doing is plugging this negative 5 in for x. And then on the right-hand side, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to plug in negative 5 for x <clears throat> and another negative 5 for x. Okay, this is just a statement here, p of negative 5. What is it? So we want to work on the right-hand side only. So negative 5 squared is positive 25. And negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. And we get 50. On your final answer, I want you to say that P of negative 5 is 50. So don't forget to add that P of negative 5 is 50 at the end. This is a coordinate point, too, just so you guys know. I'm actually plugging in negative 5, and I'm getting 50 out. So it's a coordinate point on, in this case, <clears throat> the parabola because it's x squared. Okay? If we had plugged into this one, it would be a coordinate point on a line. 